That's you and I right there, the two uh, stars. No offense, John. Can <laughs> <laughs> you see it? A little bit. Oh, a little up. bit, little yellow. There you go, their namesake. Hi, guys. I'm in the car again. It's Saturday morning, and I'm on my way to New York City for the New York Turtle and Tortoise Society's annual seminar. There's a great speaker lineup, and I'm so excited to check it out. And I'm also excited to share it with you. Hope you enjoy. And I'm really, really excited about this today. You know, what's so tremendous about this, a lot of people may not realize, but this is one of the most long-lived uh, turtle and tortoise societies in the entire country. Maybe only outlived by maybe one other um, that comes to mind, but basically, They've been doing this for a long time, about 50 years. And if you look at this annual seminar, which they've been doing since like the 1980s, if you look at the lineup of people that have spoken at this seminar, it's absolutely incredible. So we're talking about, you know, people like Peter, Peter Pritchard, who's one of the most well-known uh, turtle biologists of all time. And then also, you know, this is the actual seminar where Bill McCord in the late 90s actually blew the whistle on the what would become the Asian turtle crisis because he went there and he saw the markets and what was happening to the animals there. So, you know, year in, year out, up until COVID, this was a really huge event for uh, spreading important turtle information. And today's lineup is no different. We've got Russ Burke from Hofstra University, an amazing professor and a personal friend of mine who's been out to my place many times. He's going to be talking about the amazing work they've been doing in Jamaica Bay with Diamondback Terrapins. And then the second speaker is Ray Farrell. Now, he's been an incredible uh, resource, not only for me, but but all of turtle keeping. And obviously, he does more than that. He is a, a herpetologist himself. But two things that I do because of Ray uh, have changed my life. One is palpating females, bringing them inside and giving them egg laying areas uh, outside of their normal enclosure because things happen sometimes. Some For some species like uh, the yellow margin or Chinese box turtle that he's so well known for, the females will eat the eggs. In other species like the Pacific pond turtle, they like to drop their eggs in the water and just you know, drop them wherever in captivity. So I bring them in and I give them a nice spot by themselves, quiet, and they lay their eggs and I get their eggs every single time. So that's been a game changer. And then also keeping neonate box turtle and other terrestrial turtles very wet as hatchlings. That's something I first learned from Ray and both of those bits of wisdom have absolutely been a game changer for me and I can't thank him enough. And then last but not least, uh, Bob Zappalardi, who is uh, the the proprietor, the owner of Herpetological Associates, and he is a herpetologist who's been doing this forever. I just got him to sign my book uh, on turtles and crocodilians from the 70s. He's here, he has his new book out on bog turtles. He's here signing books and he's here to speak. I can't even tell you how awesome this is. It's all happening here today. I'm sorry if you missed it, but maybe next year you'll make it out. This is just such a cool opportunity to be here. Years, uh, we've been this for many, 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 many years. We've been doing this for many, many years. Lots and lots and lots of volunteers have helped here. We just really want to really acknowledge the hundreds of people, uh, and certainly over the years, thousands of people who have helped on this project uh, over the years. We certainly had here where we had over 150 volunteers working with us uh, in, in a particular summer, and uh, some summers, uh, not as many, but many summers as high as that. So uh, it's been an impressive experience. I've gotten to know so many wonderful turtles we've uh, over the years. And it's, 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 it's been a very good thing to be here. In the back, we were first right there. That's right. Uh, any concern about all of the crazy amount of construction at JFK right now and if that would affect animals? The barriers are pretty good at reducing the mortality of a therapist. Every now and then we'll get a high tide event. Um, and, and that lifts the barriers up, the terrapins get onto that, and for a nice day, the terrapins will come in in numbers, and they'll get 10 or 20 animals will get killed, um, but more likely, it shuts down the airport. They're really good at shutting down the airport when the terrapins get on the runway. They are still cleaning 30, 40, 50, 60 terrapins uh, an hour some days uh, off the runway. Wow. So, um, they, I mean, 
they, they still deal a lot with him. And I don't think the construction is likely to be the big idiot on the top 10 of these issues. It's called the Turtle Lover's Guidebook. It's a book that pretty much says if you really love turtles, don't go in the wild. Don't take them from nature. If you love turtles, these are all the cool places you can go and see them. Nature, centers, zoos, aquariums, and some special places. So it is lined up uh, by region. So you can go east, south, central, and west. And uh, here's, for example, here's the east. And so the majority of the book is uh, these public sites. But there's also a chapter on organizations, a chapter on rescues, a chapter on turtles on social media, and projects and programs. So there's a lot of information, all for turtle lovers. So Tony's book is incredible. Um, I wrote the foreword, which I can't tell you what an absolute honor it was for him to ask me to do that. And we weren't really sure if it was going to fit in the book at first, but it's in there. Uh, this book is honestly just important. It's just important for people to have access, to know where animals are, to, to take that little spark of interest that, you know, some young person has and just bring it to the next level. I can't, I can't say how grateful I am that Tony put in the hard work to make this a book a reality. It's just amazing. I am with one of my best friends in the world, Kevin Pollack, who is making his debut on our channel. I'm really excited right now because Kevin and I are doing a really weird trade. Now, if you're a turtle person, you probably have met people in parking lots before, so this is no different than that normal turtle person thing. But uh, do that? we're doing something different today. Okay, so we're in the back of my pickup truck here, and I have for you, Kev, the first copy of the Great American Turtle Chase, which is the story of the cross-country trip that you and I and our friend John did in eight days. Really exciting. This is like the advanced author copy. Not for resale. Not for resale, well, exactly. For, tra for trade is allowed? Yeah, well, it's not really a trade, <laughs> right? So I'm giving this to Kevin because he's old school and he doesn't want to read the <laughs> digital version of what I've provided. I like paper. Yeah, he likes to feel the paper. So I've got some paper and we've got a couple weeks before that thing actually goes live. So look for that on December 1st, 2024. That book will be uh, hitting Amazon, available for purchase, but Kevin's gonna do a read through to make sure that I didn't lie too much about what actually happened on that trip. You gotta set me straight. Yeah, you gotta set me straight. And you always do. Yeah. So what did you bring for me? I have for you. Which, oh boy. Uh, you actually gave me. Oh. Um, what do we got here? You're going to open it too? I love it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. People want to see. Yearling Beals. Yearling Sicilia Beals. Yeah. Beals four, eyed four turtles. Eyed turtle. Beals four eyed turtle. Beals yeah. Turtle. Yeah. That's awesome. Eyes. Yeah. We don't usually get eyes. Are they good yeah. for you? Are yours good? So they have uh, some nice ocelli on the back of their heads. Ocelli. Now, nice vocab word. You're not messing oh, around. Oh, there we go. Come on. Oh, I got to zoom in. See it? A little bit. Oh, a little bit. A little yellow. There you go. Their namesake. Yeah, so those like butterfly markings on top of their head, that is their namesake that makes them, you know, uh, that's what they're known for. And they're really, really cool species that a lot of people don't seem to appreciate. So I've been raising these up for a little bit, and now they're going back to you. They are going back to me today. Here. Sweet. It's a good thing they're a relatively cold tolerant species because there's a little chill in the air, but they can handle it. Awesome. Nice and active. You know what's funny is we're here at this turtle meeting. The people inside would probably be thrilled to know that these are out here right now, but we're not going to tell them. <laughs> it's like having uh, members of a boy band in a little paper bag that everyone would go crazy for if they knew they were here. This meeting is more talks and not, you know, animals. Yeah. But. Yeah. Right. This is good. We got here winery and distillery. Oh, they're just gonna think that I'm a drunkard. That's all. <laughs> Kev, I can't. I can't thank you enough. And I, I guess I should also just say that, you know, since you're one of my best friends, I think we're gonna see a lot more of you on the channel. So people should get ready for that. Are you okay with that? I don't think they're ready. I, I don't think they're ready either. They have sure. no idea yeah. what they're getting in for, what they're signing up for here.
I appreciate you, man. Yep, thank you. Can you see the back of my head. You can. He's on the back cover. You, that's you and I right there, the two uh, stars. No offense, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. The problem uh, happened to me in the spring. Trojan, you give one day, down in the mall. Good afternoon, folks. I'm going to dedicate my talk to Peter Pritchett, who was a very good friend of the New York Turtle and Water Society. We even spent a whole year trapping to see if turtles were there and then we could find them. To burn working with the state, uh, started captive breeding the turtles at the Moscow Zoo. And they resigned them. Hi, guys. It's now dark out, and I'm about to be home actually. It's been a long day, but little Anthony reflection time. What an awesome event. Anytime we can get together, right, continue building this community is always a benefit. But I'll tell you what, Russ Burke presented today on 25 years of his work with Diamondback Terrapins in Jamaica Bay. Then Ray Farrell presented on his work with the Chinese box turtle for 45 years. After that, Bob Zappalordi spoke about his work with bog turtles over the course of 50 years. Now, I don't think they planned for this, but what a cool, you know, uh, succession of speakers just to talk about all of those cumulative years working with these iconic turtle species. It was amazing. And that's what you get with the New York Turtle and Tortoise Society as one of the, if not the longest running turtle and tortoise society in the United States. There's such a wealth of knowledge and, and such, an incre such an incredible, you know, uh, uh, amount of years behind what they've done with that organization and it's just an honor to be there and you know if you're in the northeast come to the next one if you have a turtle society near you go to the next meeting because there's so much that could be learned and and really the best part for me was the networking shaking hands meeting people conversing with people there's nothing like it so get out there be a part of your community make the world a better place for turtles appreciate you hit subscribe join the crew just turtles there's always something new Subscribe!